Hello, uh, this video is going to be uh, another exercise looking at summarizing quantitative variables uh, with a frequency distribution table and uh, we'll also produce the corresponding histogram. So we have uh, an exercise here looking at uh, share prices. I've got the share prices of 28 companies listed on the Dow Jones. So we're going to first complete the, uh, the table uh, frequency, relative frequency, percent frequency, and then, and then we'll put together the histogram. So, we we have uh, already our classes are defined for us. So we don't need to worry about identifying, you know, how many classes and what is the width of the class going to be. Uh, here, that information has been provided to us uh, in in the, in the exercise. So we can just move ahead and uh, start counting how many observations fit uh, or fall into each of those bins, each of those buckets, uh, however you want to call them. They can go by many names. So let's uh, let's start off here. I'm going to try to color code this as best I can, uh, hopefully to make it a little bit easier for you to follow. So our first class uh, are those share prices between 0 and 29. So as I go through 0 to 29, gee, are there any? Okay, there's one here. Looks like there's only one, one observation uh, that falls into that bucket. Uh, relative frequency, so again, I'll write down these formulas uh, just for reference. So relative frequency is the frequency or the number of observations uh, in that bucket divided by the total number of observations. And I think the exercise told us here we have 28 companies, so n equals uh, 28 in these calculations. Okay. So the first uh, the first relative frequency. Let me find my calculator here. So this is one divided by 28. Oops. So 0 0.03. Let me round it to uh, 0 0.04. 0 0.04. Where'd my colors go? 0.04 and percent frequency. This is uh, this is only the relative frequency times 100 again, just so that we can speak in terms of percentages. So this is going to be 4 percent. Okay, our next class is 30 to 59. So I'm just going to scan that data set and look for values that fall between 30 and 59. Oops, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Looks like I have eight observations there. Uh, usually I can count on my students to point out any that I may have missed. I think I've got them all. Okay, so then we have uh, eight, oops, Clear this 8 divided by 28. So I have a relative frequency of 0.285. I'll round this to 0 .0, uh, 0.29. So that's 29% of those share prices fall within those values or fall into that bucket. Uh, moving on, 60 to 89. So that was 1, 2, 3, 4. Five, six, seven, eight. Looks like I also have eight in that bin, so that's going to be 20.29, and again 29%. Next one, 90 to 119. I'm going to run out of colors here, I think. 90 to 119. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have six observations there. So that gives me then a relative frequency of 6 divided by 28, uh, 0.21, and that's 21%. 120 to 149 is our next. Uh, 120 to 149, there's one, there's one, two, three, uh, oh, and four. Oh, five, my goodness, five of those. Oops. There's five, that's a hideous five, my goodness. There's five observations there. 
And so our relative frequency here, 5 divided by 28, is 17. Let's round that to 18. And that's 18%. And then what's left? Do I have another color? I guess gray will have to do. 150 plus, so here we're at uh, our last one here. 155, 1, 2, and that's it. That's all that's left. Two observations. This will be about 0 0.08, and that'll be 8%. Okay, so there we've completed our table. It's about as uh, pretty <laughs> of a frequency distribution table I can do uh, with my limited colors available. So our next step now is to produce the histogram. Uh, so the the difference between a bar graph and a histogram uh, is subtle. A histogram looks like a bar graph. The only difference between a histogram and a bar graph graphically is that the bars are pressed up against each other. They're touching each other. Uh, and this just indicates that there is no real separation and values between you know, the upper limit of one and the lower limit of another. So let, let me show you what that means. Uh, here I'll produce uh, my graph up here. So again, on the y-axis, I'll show frequencies. And on the x-axis, now we're going to have all of our bins. So this is 0 to 29, 30 to 59, 60 to 89, 90 to 119, 120 to 149, and 150 plus uh, probably 150 to 160. 180 would be appropriate, uh, but this is okay. So let's go through. I'll try to keep my colors consistent. So the first one, we have one observation. So there's my first observation. This is going to be a one. I'll put the data labels on here just to make it uh, maybe a little bit more clear. It's not necessary. It's not in fact, it's not even that common. I'm just putting the data labels on here just uh, to make it a little bit easier for, for you to see what I'm doing. Uh, the next one, 30 to 59. Here we had eight observations. So I'm going to pick up right here. Does that look like it's about eight times as tall? And so I've made a point of ensuring that there's no gap between... Uh, either of these two bars and that's just to indicate that you know this this is consistent this is fluid there's nothing between 29 and 30 it flows from one into the next into the next into the next I could I suppose change this label to 29.99 so that that difference is even smaller but you know this this gets the point across there's there's no difference between or sorry there's there's no separation between 29 and 30 they're together. Next, uh, green. I want my green for the next 60 to 89. This is the same. This is the same height as the last. So this will go like this. This is eight observations. Oh, and I forgot to label this one. Is also eight observations. 90 to 119. And we have six. Okay, next 120 to 159, I have five observations. And 150, I have here just two observations. Oh, that's going to be hard to do. Let's call that two. Maybe my scale is off just a little bit here, but hopefully that makes sense. So we've got a, oh, one of the nicest looking histograms I think I've ever seen. <laughs> nice color coding. Uh, all of our bars are pressed tightly up against each other. There's no space between them because there's no observations. There's nothing that exists between them. This, uh, this chart or this x-axis uh, is, is continuous from 0 uh, to 150 and beyond. It's a continuous graph. So there's no space in between uh, those individual bins or those individual categories. Uh, okay, so uh, I hope this helps. Um, 
produce uh, these frequency distribution tables uh, as well as the corresponding histograms. Uh, hopefully uh, it uh, will become a little bit easier for you uh, next time you have to do one. Okay, thanks a lot for watching.